Welcome to the Milk and Cookies podcast. This is the super amazing podcast that has absolutely everything to do with the sport of American football and absolutely nothing to do with Milk and Cookies. My name is Alex. We, uh, Anthony's here. Um, Yay. Let's just get right into it. This is something Anthony and I have been discussing more like for basically a long time. For a couple of weeks now. It's uh, Justin Fields long. versus Mac Jones. Um... I mean, I think Fields is better, and he thinks Jones is better. So right now we're going to argue which of the two is better, who's a better fit for San Francisco. Uh, and there's also money writing on this. So Money on, yeah. So, yeah. So let's get right into <laughs> it. All right, Anthony, give me give me your reason why Mac Jones is uh Mac Jones better. was coming out of Alabama. He's been – he was learned – he learned his quarterback skills behind some of the best to attack of a – Tua out of Alabama, and he went to my the Finns, go Dolphins. And he's also learned from Jalen Hurts, and Jalen Hurts is on the Philadelphia Eagles right now. And Mac Jones, yeah, he has the height. He's six foot two, but Justin Fields is a little taller than him, but that doesn't really matter. Mac Jones still was provided with Alabama with that championship mentality and good receivers, a great offensive line great protection he had a mate he sadly they beat Clemson in the Sugar Bowl game but and then went on to win the national championship but Mac Jones has won a national championship and he has so much potential in the NFL and he's projected to go at three to the 49ers I think Mac Jones will be the answer because he just has everything a quarterback needs for this team Oh, that's it? Yeah. Okay. All right, let's get right into it, why I think Justin Fields is better. Uh, so, yeah, all right, I know Anthony was trying to sweet talk his way, saying that Tua and the Dolphins, aha, good. Ah, yeah, it's not going to work this time, pal. Um, <laughs> it's not. All right, so this is my I mean, reasoning. Justin Fields also has been hurt many a plentiful of times, so he's also very injury prone. Not necessarily. He hasn't necessarily been injured too far, and the injuries that he has have been very low-risk injuries that don't necessarily impact anything of his career. It's not like an ACL tear, you know, that it's just going to mess up his entire career. It's, what, a shoulder tear during way right before the Clemson game in the playoffs, and that was it? And even then, he balled out against that Clemson game to kick the crap out oh, of yeah, him. Yeah. So, yeah, this is why Justin Fields is just a better fit and just a better quarterback. There's nothing wrong against Mac Jones, but let me just get into why Fields is a better fit for San Francisco. Uh, first off, it, it all revolves around the head coach, uh, Kyle Shanahan. Kyle Shanahan is known for picking guys that are mobile, dual threat, just quarterbacks like that. You look at his past. Remember, he was a part of the – he was an offensive coordinator for the Redskins back in 2013 when they drafted and used Robert Griffin III before the incident. Shanahan has always adapted his play style to be a quarterback that can move, that can throw, and can make up decisions on his own. Um, when he became part of the San Francisco organization, they got Jimmy Garoppolo, which is pretty much the same thing. And even the backups, Beathard and Mullins, are all following that little dual threat West Coast type of offense. Justin Fields is no exception to that. He knows exactly how to play West Coast. The guy ran a 4 4 6, which is pretty. I thought it was a 4 4 4. 4 4 6 was the official. Oh, okay. And, which is a actually pretty decent for a quarterback that can run a yeah. West Coast dual threat offense. Um, mine is that the other thing of Ryan, I just don't think Mac Jones is worthy of the third spot. Or I mean, Mac San jo- Francisco is just because of Mac Jones play style. All right. He's a very, how do I say this? He's not, I don't want to say stale. He's a very st- still, he's a very still quarterback. Typically a pocket presence doesn't necessarily like to lead the pocket. And when he does, it's typically just to throw it out of bounds or it's, going long for an interception. Or, he has a deep you know, ball and position. he has a strong arm. Yeah, he has a strong arm and a deep ball, but only for in the pocket. The second he leaves that pocket, that accuracy that he has decreases by a lot because he's throwing on the run. Remember, he's not the very, he's not the most athletic guy. That's my okay. thing with Mac Jones. And the other thing of why Kyle Shanahan is not going to pick Jones, uh, the 2019, no, I'm sorry, the Super Bowl with the 49ers and the Chiefs. Uh, Jimmy Garoppolo overthrew that ball so many times to the San Francisco uh, wide receivers. Yeah, but Shane- Jimmy Gar- Jimmy Garoppolo is a different quarterback than Mac Jones. I know. I understand that. Garoppolo went through his flaw, his flaws. I understand he went through his flaws, but I didn't get to finish. I didn't go through my comparison. My bad. It's not that they're placed. I'm not trying to say that the, that the difference of play styles between Garoppolo and Jones is what sets them apart. It's the fact that their their tendency to overthrow the ball. Yeah, Jones has a heck of an arm. But that also means that he's going to be able to overthrow. During his pro day, one-on-one, him and a wide receiver, he overthrew a couple balls. 
Shanahan was there, and I guarantee that guy had PTSD from that Super Bowl. Jimmy Garoppolo in that Super Bowl game overthrew so many footballs, and if they would have just shortened that by maybe half of what he overthrew, probably would have won the Super Bowl and beat the Chiefs, but he didn't. Um, what's the other thing? Yeah, it's just, I don't know, the age of the pocket passer type quarterbacks is just dead. The only other major quarterbacks that are pocket passer presences is Tom Brady and Ben Roethlisberger and maybe Aaron Rodgers if you argue long enough, but Aaron Rodgers is still mobile. Mac Jones is a guy that likes to stay in the pocket, and he can launch it a good 50 yards if he's in the pocket. That's why. If he leaves that pocket, you send a DB right for his legs, and he's going to fold and throw it out of bounds. Kyle Shanahan is not going to pick a guy that is going to fold the second he leaves the pocket. And you also have to remember, Mac Jones played with arguably one of the best offensive lines and wide receiver cores in the entire nation in Alabama. That man's offensive line could hold up anything, any defensive lineman, any, any pass rush, any anything. And the wide receivers could get separation like that. There weren't that many jump ball opportunities, were there? You just have Devonta Smith and, JJ and uh, Jalen Waddle run 40, 50-yard um, um, go routes, and he'll just lob it up and catch it perfectly fine. It's the same thing with Tua. That's why everybody hate, doesn't like Tua. That, there's just so much stuff about Jones that I just don't like about his play style. I don't think he's going to be a bad quarterback in the NFL. I think he's going to be fine. But my thing is, the guy ran a 4.86. I have seen offensive linemen run faster than that. That was his 40 time, a 4.86, compared to Justin Fields, who was four tenths of an entire second faster and is known for playing a West Coast. I'm now done. You got a rebuttal to that? Mac Jones, on another hand, his most recent season at Alabama, he threw for 45. 4,500 yards, 41, inter 41 touchdowns, and four interceptions. The man really doesn't throw that many interceptions besides just the four he threw this past season. And then the past season, he threw 14 interceptions and had 21 touchdowns. I forgot the yards, but I think everyone's hating on Mac Jones just because, oh, you look at his 40 time and he's not a pocket pat. Like he's not a West coast quarterback. He's not this, he's not that, but just because he ran a slow 40 time doesn't mean he's not a bad quarterback and he won't fit that play style. I still think that San Francisco will take Mac Jones. I mean, I wasn't trying to say that he's going to be a bad quarterback because of the 40 time or because he's a pocket passer. You could fit any quarterback in any type of scheme, but for somebody that's, their play style is a West Coast dual threat offense where Jimmy Garoppolo had to run the ball and he was able to run it. He's able to outrun some linemen, outrun some defensive linemen. I'm just saying if Mac Jones is gonna is not gonna have that element of speed, which should always be fixed through workouts, this, that, and the other. I mean, I guarantee over the offseason for next week, he's probably gonna be a little bit faster. But when you just see that that, that time right there in the back, because right now we're not in potentiality. We're in here is here are the stats for the pro day. And this is what he's going to compare on day one of the, of the next season. A 4-8-4 four, four or 4-8-6. Four, I can't remember which one it is. I just know it's one of the two. Um, yeah, but Jameis – But what? Jameis Winston ran a time like that, and he's still with the Saints. Well, Jameis Winston also went through horrible career – like four bad – five. how many seasons did he play? What, four or five seasons? I think he's going into a sixth season. Oh, I meant with the Bucks, not necessarily with the Oh, Saints. he played um five. Okay, yeah, he played five seasons. He was average. Like I said, he had the arm, but it was just the vision and the ball reader capabilities that he didn't have. And Mac Jones there was a James quarterback last. There was a quarterback last year that ran a forty-yard dash time at four six eight, four six nine, yeah. and they're six. They're six three, two thirty one, two twenty nine. Yeah, but that's the thing. Those that those aren't awful stats. A four six, even a high four six, is still considered average for a quarterback. Right. The thing is, is when you get down to like the 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 the, the nitty -gritty, nitty gritty super yeah the super small details, when you figure that an average West Coast type quarterback can run a high four six at most, and then you see Mac Jones has a four eight, that's definitely going to set off a couple bars in in Kyle Shanahan and the rest of the coaching staff. Now of course, you never know what's going to happen on draft day. For all we know, they could pick Mac Jones. But they I'm could just, pick Trey Lance. They could pick Lance. They could they could pick Kyle Trask at number three for all we know, depending on that would be know, a, that yeah. would be a reach. Yeah, that's not going to happen anytime soon, especially not Trask because he's from Florida. Look, it it just all goes down to where he came from. I'm not saying that Alabama quarterbacks are bad. There have been times where Alabama quarterbacks have been good. Uh, and then you look at the now you look at the national championship game. Alabama yeah. Alabama dominated that game. Yes, they did. 
But there's also one other thing that everybody must consider. Would you have a powerhouse team like Alabama? You're Alabama never going to win. Good that. depth. Exactly. They have good depth. They have good starters. They have good depth. Every other team has a, has a problem at one little thing. Alabama going into this, is going no. into this year for Alabama. I don't even know what to expect. I don't even know who their starting quarterback is. I guarantee it'll be perfectly fine. But my, my, the one thing that I keep alluding to is college is significantly different than the NFL. Everybody on your college team, at least half of them will somehow make it to the NFL. But and an even start? smaller percentage is actually going to start for an NFL team. Right. So in, in Al- you know, Alabama, yeah, they have a heck of a line. But how many of those guys are going to be quality starters in the future? Right. When you pit them against this, oh, Mac Jones to San Francisco, who has a pretty average line right now. It's not super great, but it's not trash. You know, it can, it can, it's serviceable. But when For you have a, an San off- Francisco, San Francisco could take Penny Solo. Yeah, exactly. You never know. But just well, what I'm trying to say is, you look at the NFC West Conference and you look at those uh, those defensive lines the- going up against mm-hmm. Mac Jones, Aaron Donald, JJ Watt. I mean, dude, oh yeah, JJ Nick Bosa. Oh, Nick Bosa's on San Francisco, but that's. But anyway, you just, anyway. <laughs> you just look at those defensive lines and you realize that those guys can be faster or if not the same speed as Mac Jones. So when he rolls out trying to throw a five-yard, ten-yard pass down the field to hopefully get a couple yards and you see Aaron Donald or, or J.J. Watt coming up on your tail trying to get the turn just to get, just to get your foot, how many more times do you think Mac Jones can be successful than a faster quarterback like J, J, um, Justin Fields? It all comes down to IQ football and ability to escape the pocket and improvise. His and Mac Jones's improvisation is not very good because he's known for throwing to the guy that can run ten yards faster than the defensive end or than the defensive back. Alabama wide receivers are known for being fast. They're not known for being jump ball type of guys. Um, their offensive line is known for being one of the best. And now you have now you're going down to San Francisco, whose offensive line is like I said, maybe, average. Yeah, average, maybe fifteen at most. Um. It's just it, just to looking me, at it, <clears throat> looking at the schedule for the 49ers, they're gonna have to go up the, against the Green Bay Packers, mm-hmm. the Minnesota Vikings, the downfall of the Houston Texans. Who God knows what they're gonna happen with? Probably nothing. Probably nothing. They're gonna play Chicago. They're gonna play Detroit. They're gonna play Jacksonville. The Rams, the Eagles, Arizona, Seattle, Green Bay, Minnesota, Houston, Indy, Atlanta. Seattle again, and Tennessee and Cincinnati. Mm-hmm. And four, four of those teams, mm-hmm. four or five of those teams have a really good defensive line. Four, I'd say half of those teams have a defensive line that could be dominating against a quarterback like him. Either quarterback, they're gonna, they're definitely gonna suffer in their first year. It's oh just who's yeah, gonna, it's, it's just who's not gonna, gonna suffer really... less. San Francisco in their first year, if they take either quarterback, they're gonna suffer. Don't expect no, a win. It you should never expect a winning season with a rookie quarterback in their first year. That's next to impossible. No, no rookie quarterback has come out. And they're gonna have himself. their they're gonna have their games that are good. Mm-hmm. They're gonna have some good games and they're gonna have the bad games. It's everything's a learning opportunity. Exactly. It's just any rookie quarterback. But I mean, do you have any closing remarks on Mac Jones? Or are you pretty? You pretty I just happy? think Mac Jones. Mac Jones is the answer at three. That's fine. Then you're allowed to have your opinion, no matter how wrong. And it you're is. allowed to have your opinion. Yeah, I just think Fields is just the better fit. Ah, uh, I mean, uh, I mean, I'm just trying to think of any other reason. Why I mean, Mac, Mac Jones could also could also shake some seconds off his 40 time and get more fit, and maybe run another 40 and see what he does. His frame isn't going to be fit for anything past a four, four, six, five at most. It could shake it down from a four eight to a four six. Yeah, it could. But that's so not, will it? No, that's not right now. That's the thing. We're talking about right now. Right. In who's the better quarterback? Three years down the line, there could be a clear winner of who it is. But I'm saying right now, who's the better fit for San Francisco and who's the better quarterback? Who's the most QB, NFL-ready guy that could fit almost any offense? Justin Fields. Mm-hmm. Any day of the week. I think, any day. Yeah, but... I think if any team was put in, in San Francisco's for, uh, situation and they had the third overall pick, and all they needed was a was a quarterback that was dynamic. Was that? Could, uh, hmm? I mean, that quarterback that's going to be their future. And are they going to be like 
certain quarterbacks in demand will demand who they pick, who they trade, who they sign for, or are they going to let management do that? And at the end of the day, it's always management's decision to decide who is the best fit for their team. Right. So I think that's it. Uh, we're going to wrap up this episode. Uh, let us, let know, us know what you think. Yes. Let us know in the comments who you think is better, uh, who you agree with more. Just let us know. Leave a like, leave a comment, leave a Give us a subscribe if you feel like it. Uh, we'll probably be pumping Anything out more helps. of this uh, opinionated stuff more often. I kind of like doing this. So this hopefully we might get this more. Hopefully we're going to get this running more. So thank you so much for watching and we'll see you all real soon.